Hey, what's up, you guys, and welcome back to episode 24 of Roger Williams Park Zoo. I am joined as, uh, not as always, but uh, similar to last time with Dill. Uh, Hi, guys. <laughs> so he joined me for um, the uh, camel episode in the Venetian Plaza, and so uh, I thought, you know, we could just kind of continue where we left off last time and basically just do the... Uh, the main food court of the zoo, as well as the gibbon enclosure. So, um, basically, I don't know, I mean, you haven't been to Roger Williams in a couple years, it's, right? Yeah, so, it's been two years? Yeah, two years. Yeah, so the last time you went, right, it was probably, the food court was probably called, like, the wilderness something, and it was, like, North American themed? I feel like that, that sounds about right. Um... And that is how it was for a bit. The old old uh, food court, I forgot what it was called exactly. It was something like Wilderness Diner or something, I, I don't know. Basically, it was a weird out of place North American themed exhibit, or uh, um, not exhibit, uh, restaurant. And it had like a bear on the front with some deer and bald eagles. And it really made no sense considering this was in the middle of like the asia section if anything <laughs> like like basically it's right next to the camels and the gibbons and technically even next to like something like face of the rainforest now was but, it near uh, anything like north american at any point I, the closest it's n closest it's near to is i guess you could argue the bald eagles but oh maybe. that's kind of far <laughs> Yeah, it's still, yeah. like, on the other end of a gift shop in the Venetian Plaza and stuff, so it's kind of out of the way. So, uh, recently, um, probably at the beginning of the year, actually, not even, I think it was during the summer. It was during, like, the period when they were closed, actually. Um, like, probably, like, the like early May-June time period. Mm -hmm. is probably when they did the change, but it is now uh, called 401 Nourish. Uh, oh. four, 401 referring to Rhode Island's area code, since we only have one area code. Um, Lame. So, um, yeah, so basically that that's what it's called. And it's got, it got this like weird, like kind of modern, uh, modern architecture aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. like, like wood, but like with like metal, like trim. And uh, I, I mean, I think it's slightly nicer looking, but it kind of lost some of the zoo uh, food court aesthetic if that makes sense um again i don't really know there's not too much to say about it it's just a it's a, it's a food court it is a food court i remember and, the food being good uh i've never actually had the food i know it's overpriced uh, as yeah. you know i mean that's pretty standard for most zoo gift shop or uh, yeah. food courts let's face it um but yeah i know that it was very overpriced i never went to this one I used to go to, like, the Tusker House uh, gift shop or, like, food court a little bit, mostly for drinks. Like, if I was, like, really thirsty, I'd get, like, a water bottle or something. But, um, yeah. So now, you know, this is just their new thing. So I started out trying to get Ricey's fonts. Um, once again, I'm using the font of the person that whose name begins with a J that I can't pronounce. Uh, once again, we'll link it in the description, as always. Um, and yeah, I'm basically messing around with different, uh, fonts and you see me mess up like three times, uh, during this process. So at first, what I do is I try to make a custom logo that's very small. As you can see, it's using like these like very small custom pieces. Um, and then as I put it on the sign, I realize, wow, that's a very small sign. Like, <laughs> like that is, uh, that is not fitting at all. So I tried to make the, the sign smaller, but then I just kind of realized, nah, it's not, it's a little too small. Like, it's just not really working out. Um, they have the, like I was saying, they have this kind of like modern art design using like different like wood that's kind of like abstract in a way. Like oh. there's, yeah, it's like weird, like it'll like jut out and stuff in random ways and it's kind of weird, um, and obviously like, the Australia set is already kind of like that, so I basically just kind of mimicked the, the wood style and made like different colors and that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's, like, it's a pleasant looking sign, I just, like I said, I think they probably should have just made it a little bit more zoo themed, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. Um, 
So what I'm now doing is I'm just kind of filling out the uh, the actual like the main area. The plaza is pretty empty. I mean, I'm sure you remember remember that at least. Yeah. Like, it's very you know open. There's just a couple of like little like uh, picnic tables and stuff. Uh, so I needed to at least place down the path so that I could place down those picnic tables. But past that, it's just an open area. Uh, to make sure that it was completely covered, though, you uh, later see me. I basically go in with um, uh, what's it called, like co uh, plaster or concrete pieces, and then just kind of clean that up a bit. But uh, yeah, so that's basically what I'm doing right now. Uh, but uh, what I'm doing now is I'm basically making that same sign, but out of uh, art shapes so that they're slightly bigger. Uh, and I think even this one is the one I didn't want. It was kind of weird. Um, so it was just, you know. Also, it, it kind of annoyed me that the H just wasn't showing up. Um, so no matter what, it was just kind of like not working out. My Discord keeps going off. It's really annoying. Uh, <laughs> But uh, there we go. Uh, so now I'm making the sign a lot bigger right here. Um, and as you can see, I'm basically using like more of those wooden pieces to kind of get like to jot out like even like more jagged than the first time. So it's a lot more. Uh, and then I think it's at this point I realized I think it was too big. <laughs> so then I went and made it again using the smaller art pieces. So this is the third time I've now made this exact same sign. Um, so, yeah. I, I, third I, time's a charm? Uh, yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah. it works out. Uh, so, you know, there you go. Nurse for one. There it is. We, we did it! And then, <laughs> once again, I, you know, make the sign. I, basically, right now, I'm just orienting it so that it all, like, lines up perfectly. But then afterward, then we go to, um, you know, what we obviously see as the, once again, very jagged sign. I think I actually switched the wood up this time, though. Instead of using the uh, Australia wood, I'm using the New World wood pieces. Um, so, if anyone wants to make uh, kind of like modern art type design, there you go. Use the New World wood. Uh, so now this is where uh, the fun part is, where I'm basically covering up the path so that it all looks gray. So there's no dirt and stuff <laughs> showing up. Uh, and this was kind of a messy process. I think off camera I might try to change it so that it uh, you know looks a little bit better. Because um, you can still see some of the lines where like I put the seams and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, so. I do want to mention, since I haven't mentioned it uh, last time, the little wolf uh, statue that you're probably like, that's out of place. What's that doing there? Um, that is uh, kind of the unofficial like monument in the zoo. It's of a Labrador retriever um, in the actual zoo. And it's been is there. the dog thing? The dog thing, yes. Oh. That you don't understand, but yeah. it is a thing that all Rhode Islanders understand as a thing that has always been at the zoo. And no one knows why. But, you know... Everyone just goes along with it because everyone likes their dog. It was actually kind of cute during coronavirus. They put some, uh, they put a mask on it. I could pull Aww. up the picture. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a little like retriever and, uh, in the gift shop, they sell little ornaments and stuff and a snow globe of it. Cause it's just that iconic, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. Rhode Island just has like a lot of like weird, like, uh, like points of interest, I guess, around the state. Like in Providence, on the other side of the of ninety five, they have the big blue bug. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen that. I feel like I've heard of that. Yeah, it's basically a yeah. giant. Uh, there's like this pest control company uh, in Providence, and they built a giant bug statue that's blue, and so you can't miss it as you enter Providence. There's, it's just a giant blue bug that's just in the middle of Providence. Um, and that, it's probably like one of the most Rhode Island things you can do. And so the dog statue in Roger Williams Park Zoo is also probably up there for like, you know, uh, notoriety, I suppose. Uh, right now I'm just basically cleaning up what the actual, like, you know, buildings look like. Uh, I'm adding a little bit more, uh, detailing. So I'm adding some vents and pipes and that sort of thing. Uh, stuff that you really can't see, but like... Uh, or like from you know certain reference images uh, of the old building but like I said I was able to like go and get my own reference images to see that 
But now we get to get to the fun part of the episode, which is the actual Gibbon enclosure. Which, um, as of the time I'm recording this, could possibly be, you know, destroyed since I, I have apparently cursed this zoo. Um, <laughs> uh, the last, uh, within the, since the last episode where obviously Sasha died, the camel, the zoo has lost, uh, one of their, uh, Saki monkeys, their main Saki monkey, their Tamandua from Faces of the Rainforest, <laughs> One of their river otters. So I am pretty sure, and these are all episodes that I haven't done yet. So these are all from either World of Adaptations or Face of the Rainforest. So oh, God. after the camel, I was like, oh my God, like I need to like get episodes out a lot sooner because apparently these animals are dying before I'm able to make episodes about them. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm just kind of like, you know, trying to speed this up. So as of now, knock on wood, the gibbons are still alive. But, um, you know, who knows? <laughs> that hopefully. E hopefully they'll still be alive. Though, I will say, they're, they have been planning for a bit that the Gibbons will be getting a new enclosure soon. So the new enclosure is going to be over where the, I guess, my porcupine episode was. And you know how in that porcupine episode I was mentioning, like, oh, they kind of do temporary exhibits and stuff for different animals. So I didn't feel like doing the porcupine. Which was fine because I was right. They soon after replaced that with a snowy owl and destroyed the exhibit next to it. But the reason they destroyed it is because they're making a new gibbon enclosure um, that uh, will be the new home for the gibbons. And I assume it'll probably be a lot nicer than this one. This one, um, this exhibit's very old. It has a lot of history at the zoo. Uh, I guess back in the day they had clouded leopards. Really? I, I know. I didn't oh. know that. Um fortunate to lose yeah so this was before i was born but this wow. enclosure had clouded leopards um and so which i mean honestly it, it doesn't surprise me it's about that you know size um and you know there's some foliage and stuff yeah um but yeah so ever since i've been around it's had white cheeked gibbons so they have been you know the kind of you know animal next to the gift shop for a while now uh i do want to address this because uh even though I'm using this uh, mesh fencing that I used uh, in previous episodes, because of the Bonobo rig, which is what I built the Gibbon mod off of, I needed to replace these off camera with a new type of metal fencing. I basically used a Planet Zoo metal fence. Um, uh, actually, I think it was one of the new Australian fences, but basically to make a metal version of the same pattern because apparently bonobos can climb uh, these mesh fencing. Oh. <laughs> so I had some ropes and stuff hanging down from the mesh fencing, and what happened was they would literally climb up the ropes, jump on the roof, and escape. Like... <laughs> That's not good. So just to make sure that they weren't escaping, I then, like I said, went back and, you know, cleaned it up. And uh, I, there was a lot of little details in this exhibit that I did off-camera. Um, that you'll see in the final product though. I added a lot more ropes and swings and that sort of thing just because there's so many in the base enclosure but uh, I, I just want to include me doing the basic layout and stuff and uh, there's some weird stuff in this exhibit that I'm sure I, I'm going to need to explain because people are going to be like why, why did you do that um, so what I did find cool was I was able to make some custom swing props for this zoo or uh, for this you know exhibit and so uh, they have like these kind of like cool like ring uh, thing swings that are like almost like tire swings, but they're like wooden platforms. Uh, so there's a few of those in the enclosure. So I had to make those, which weren't too bad. They're just primitive pieces. But what I'm about to do, and uh, you saw me uh, quickly looking on the workshop. I, I was quickly looking at um, circular like kind of cages. Uh, so I know Rudy Rankamel made one in the past that was similar to this but it wasn't ideal so i just went and said you know i'm just gonna make one myself um so i quickly you know made another swing ignored it for a little bit but then you see me um i basically make it out of custom pieces in a couple of minutes but right now i'm just working on the uh the normal uh little swings and platforms and that sort of thing the stuff yep. in every gibbon enclosure yep yeah. a lot of like that's just the thing is gibbons and any apes and stuff and monkeys they just like a lot of stuff to climb and swing on so i was able to include it 
Okay, so this is probably the weird part that I have to explain away. You probably wondered, why did you just put a snowman in there? <laughs> You're right, I was just wondering that. It's because um, the last time I went, they had a small Olaf stuffed animal from Frozen oh. that they play with, and they really okay. like it. So I thought, okay, well, that, yeah, maybe I should put this <laughs> snowman in here. Um, and it's a toy, so it works. And yeah, that was my, my reasoning. It's just they have a, a little Olaf. And so instead of, I was tempted to make an Olaf stuffed animal, but I thought, yeah, it's probably easier just doing this, uh, you know, snowman. Uh, so this was my custom cage. I made it uh, using a sphere as the base, and then I basically just went around it using gutter pieces. Um, and then, yeah, it basically makes an accurate little, you know, cage for the exhibit. Uh, I feel no like this is, like, um, so when I go to um, Roger Williams, I, don't, I always forget they have gibbons for some reason. I, I feel like this enclosure is, like, I don't know, it's kind of, like... Out of, well, it's kind of hidden. Kind of way, yeah. Like, it's when you think of, like, Southwick's, which we both have been to, yep. the Gibbons are kind of just right there. Yeah. Yeah. But and over here, you got to, like, look for them. Yeah, I agree. Because they're kind of like a thing where you just see the food court open up. You don't really think, like, oh, let's look in here. And it just kind of looks like a small, like, you know, jungle or, like, forested area. Like, you're not really sure what's in here. Yeah. Um... Unless you come here, which is funny because there's two viewing areas. Like, like you can see here, there's the elevated viewing area on the side if you go around, or there's the main one, which is across from World of Adaptations. Um, and now it's even harder to like kind of even see um, with coronavirus because normally you just come out of World of Adaptations. There's the Gibbons. Now it it kind of takes you out on the other side where like it's kind of hidden. So. You know, if you know they're there, you go and see the Gibbons, but otherwise, it's whatever. But uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. Like I said, I did a lot of building off camera, um, and uh, I think I saved some blueprints and stuff for, like, the swings. Uh, but And this is me just color correcting the ground. But uh, that's pretty much it. So you can see the Gibbon mod. It's obviously not the best, and that's because I used the Bonobo rig. So... Gibbons, as we all know, either swing out, swing around, or walk, and bonobos don't. They run on their knuckles, so here you go. But uh, I think it was okay. I did the male and the female, so uh, they kind of look like the Zoo Tycoon 2 models, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think I did an okay enough job for what it is. You know, you can see them. They, you know, t play with their toys and toss around. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, we only have a few, you know, more things to do for the park. So uh, our next job is World of Adaptations. So Babarusa, Binturong, Tree Kangaroo, you're all coming up. The good stuff. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.